Good afternoon, and welcome to today's webinar, which we're delighted to be co-hosting with UCSF. Connectivity, whether internally across one's organization or externally with customers, suppliers, and partners, is critical to all enterprises, but perhaps no more so than in healthcare, where the need for information to be available to the right person at the right time is critical. In today's webinar, we'll hear from UCSF as they talk to CareWeb Messenger, a revolutionary new platform that's changing the way that patient care teams collaborate and communicate with one another, one that's enabling real-time two-way communication and that captures the patient context and persists that information for future reference. Before we dive in, let me just share a few logistics regarding the webinar today. At the top of your screen, you should see a small question button. Questions can be submitted at any time through the webinar. Feel free to use that button to ask either ourselves or our speakers um, any questions that may come up. A recording and slides from the webinar will be made available shortly after our broadcast for your reference. Okay, with that, let me introduce our guest speakers. Today, we're delighted to have Dr. Raman Khanna and Ed Martin with us. Raman and Ed, can I ask you to uh, share a few words with our audience and introduce ourselves? Sure. Thanks so much, David. Uh, this is Raman Khanna speaking from UCSF. Uh, I'm an assistant clinical professor of medicine in the Division of Hospital Medicine, and I'm lead implementation scientist for the UCSF's Center for Digital Health Innovation. Hi, thanks, David. My name is Ed Martin. I am the director for the UCSF School of Medicine Information Services Unit, which is an R&D group here at UCSF. And I also serve as a technical architect for UCSF Center for Digital Health Innovation. Thank you both. It's great to have you here with us today. Raman, for, for those that maybe haven't heard of um, UCSF before, can you uh, briefly introduce uh, who UCSF are and, and a little bit about that background for us? Certainly. So just to say a few words about UCSF, UCSF stands for University of California at San Francisco. Um, UCSF is a leading university that's dedicated to improving health worldwide. That's our motto. Um, just a few quick facts and figures, UCSF and our associated hospitals handle more than 1 million patient visits each year. Uh, we have over 25,000 uh, employees between our doctors, our nurses, dentists, pharmacists, um, and of course case managers, social workers, um, and that's all on the clinical side. In addition to that, we have many, many PhD, you know, uh, principal investigators, NIH and otherwise funded labs. And uh, our four professional schools are ranked among the top in the nation every year. And uh, just some other quick highlights. We have five Nobel laureates on faculty. Uh, we have over 40 people who've been elected to the very prestigious Academy of Sciences, including the Institute of Medicine. Um, and some other interesting facts, UCSF is actually San Francisco's second largest employer. And also that our Mission Bay campus, which is where we're giving this webinar from, was created in 2003, and it's the largest expansion in the country. And as you may know, we have a hospital opening on this site in February of 2015. Great. And you, you and Ed both mentioned the Center for Digital Health um, in your introductions. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? So certainly, I can speak to the Center for Digital Health Innovation, which is essentially the idea of one person, uh, Dr. Michael Blum. Uh, he had this idea that there should be a space where physicians, nurses, and others with creative ideas about how to use digital health could partner with uh, software experts uh, such as Ed and uh, sort of be able to evaluate technologies that already existed and build ones that, that were clearly needed and to then evaluate them together in a clinical setting. And so the goal was to catalyze this new era of precision medicine where each individual person could have a treatment tailored individually to them. Great, and I believe CareWeb's one of the first projects to come out of the Center for Digital Health, is that right? Uh, that's correct. So CareWeb uh, is, one of the, is one of the first projects to come out of the Center for Digital Health Innovation. And it really is an exemplar of this kind of collaboration between clinicians and software engineers and, uh, and the entire clinical apparatus. Okay, well, let's, let's dive in and, and talk a little bit more about CareWeb in further detail. 
Um, just to set the stage, we, we hear a lot about um, the need for, for greater interoperability, the need for greater connectivity in healthcare. And I think particularly in the U.S., in recent years, catalyzed in large part by the provisions of the Affordable Care Act and the High Tech Act in terms of meaningful use. But I think in terms of day-to-day -day life inside the wards, as, as I'm sure you can attest to better than, than I can, Dr. Khanna, um, I think this picture is, is still quite um, quite commonplace. The, the picture here of a, of a doctor looking at a clipboard with uh, patient notes scribbled um, furiously on it, um, and then, of all things, looking at a pager, um, which is his, his or her uh, kind of communication lifeline to the rest of the hospital. Is, is this an image that, that resonates with you? Uh, it certainly does, and it's, it's live from the way that I work day to day, in fact, even still. And so, you know, I think that a lot has been said about the technological challenges within the healthcare space, um, but just to sort of focus them a little bit, um, you can imagine that as lab results come back for a given patient, those need to be in some way communicated to a physician. Uh, as medications, as we understand exactly what medications the patient is taking, and we convey that to the physician so those can be ordered. This is a process we call medication reconciliation. Um, that also needs to be alerted to the ordering physician. And when a study is read, for example, you know, there's a chest x-ray, a CT scan of the head, an MRI of the back, that also needs to be sent to the physician. And by and large, those processes all occur through pages. And you may ask yourself, well, why does it happen through paging and not through some more modern technology? Well, pagers do have some advantages that we still that we still gravitate towards for a variety of reasons. And so some of those things include they have durability, they have a long life expectancy, they are sort of a well-known entity. Um, and in addition to that, you know, like UCSF in particular, you can imagine our hospital is built against a mountain, and until very recently, Wi-Fi signals were not always reliable. So for that, we were sort of stuck with this legacy solution that we've had. And the easiest way to get any information to any physician is to simply page it over to them. And part of what makes this so attractive also has been historically, uh, physicians are constantly on the move. You know, it's, it would be one thing if we did all of our workflows sitting at a computer, but the reality is, is we're constantly getting up, going to see a patient, sitting down, and the speed with which we can do things on paper is actually quite high. And so this gives you some sense of why things are the way they are. Now, we asked ourselves, could they be better? And the answer to that is definitely yes, because there are many, many limitations to the current paging system. For one thing, it's only one-to-one. -one. You know, if I'm in the lab and I page a result to an ordering physician, that ordering physician will know that information, but nobody else will know until that physician then acts on it in some way, either by sending another page, which is another one-to-one, -one, or by writing it in the chart, which maybe not everyone will read, or by placing an order. And so as a result, you can see how there's many opportunities for there to be a breakdown. In addition, the system is amnestic. Now, what do I mean by that? It means that the previous interactions are quickly forgotten. As soon as I delete a page, it's gone forever. And that's a big problem because if I wanted to know, you know, three days later, oh, what was that doctor's number from the other hospital who I forgot to write down what the number was so I could remember what to call them back at. Um, that's, that's another problem. Another problem is that it's extremely inefficient. Now, the lab or the radiologist might think to page the person whose name is at the top of the, the request for the study, but unfortunately that person might have gone off shift or might have left the country for the next couple of weeks. And as a result, there's a lot of time and energy and effort that's spent very inefficiently trying to track down, indeed, who is responsible right at this moment. And what really all of these three different aspects speak to is that there's too much disconnect, um, too much um, siloing of all this information. And so you really want something that is going to unify the electronic medical record components, which try to very clearly delineate who is responsible for caring for each individual patient, with the alert system, which is housed usually in legacy infrastructure, dealing with paging and other things, um, with additionally a sort of social collaborative component that, you know, has not really existed historically in healthcare, where especially if multiple people need to know the same thing at the same time, there's a good way to get them that information. And so all of this was a big impetus for us to develop CareWeb Messenger. And so what is CareWeb Messenger? I always talk about it as a Facebook, Twitter, pager, electronic medical record hybrid. 
And the idea is that, you know, if I want to send a page, if I want to send a message to another physician or to, let's say, to a nurse, I send that message in Care Web Messenger, and it will go to that nurse or to that physician on their device. Now, that device could be a pager, that device could be their iPhone, that device could be one of the Wi-Fi phones that works so well in the hospital. But in addition to that, it will go to that provider's wall, it'll go to my wall, and it'll also circle back to the patient's wall. And the messages I send to individual providers are visible on our respective walls, but nowhere else. But if they're tagged to a patient, anybody who's caring for that patient can see that message. And that's where the real sort of social media component of this system comes in. And so, as you can imagine, it allows there to be streams. You know, if that provider writes back to me, then that becomes a thread. That thread can later be searched individually. You can see the exchanges that have happened over time. And one of the great advantages of it is that it uses the existing infrastructure that we have. So, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, what if you just had an iPhone client that did this, this, and this? Well, that would be great, and certainly there are applications that can be developed very um, effectively that allow communication. But how do you know that the other physician or the other nurse has that particular application? How do you get them all to download it? How do you make sure that it's connected to your system so that if they leave the system or as new people come into the system that the on-ramping and off-ramping is effective? How do you know that, for example, if there's a patient that you're talking about, that the John Smith or the John Lee um, that you're talking about is the same as the one that the other person has in mind and is localized to a specific bed in the hospital. And so that's where all these different integrations come in. Integrations that I will briefly mention and Ed will go into more detail are really facilitated through having an integration um, platform like Mule that allows data to flow very, very freely and get to the places it needs to go to inform this discussion. So we integrate with Epic. We integrate with Active Directory, which is our um, sort of identity provider. Uh, we integrate with Caradigm Centillion, which are screen scraping single sign-on solutions for our medical center. Um, there's MyAxis, which is a SAML shibboleth-based um, single sign-on solution. Uh, and ASCOM and AMCOM, ASCOM being the Wi-Fi phones that nurses carry during their shifts, AMCOM being the um, the formerly known as Amcom company that is now called Spock, I believe, that allows for paging services, and then Apple push notification um, if you want to reach people on their iPhone, for example. And so, and so if you want to think about how this works in the same sort of milieu that we talked about earlier, okay, so now the lab worker wants to page a physician. And the way that they can know which physician to page is as soon as they bring up the patient's information, they can see the entire treatment team that's assigned to that patient in the electronic medical record. And so they can immediately know, oh, it looks like the person that I thought I was supposed to page has fallen off, but this person is listed as the attending, so maybe I'll go ahead and start with them. And when they send that message, or when any of these messages are sent, you can see um, the entire wall of this patient. And so that wall uh, has a great deal of information, and it also provides some, uh, you know, it provides a solution to the problem of duplication and inefficiencies um, in that people can quickly realize that this information has been communicated, or alternately, that there's information they didn't know about. And so with that, the team sees the conversation. The conversation lives on to inform other teams. There's no chance of forgetting which, what was the phone number of that outside hospital doctor that was paged to you in one random um, message four days ago. And it, the integration also narrows the, the universe of correct providers and patients. And uh, it allows the alerts to be processed more intelligently than they otherwise would be. So if I play back what I'm hearing, um, I, I, I see different um, applications um, such as the screenshot displayed here, which is um, available by web, um, also mobile, also the, the Wi-Fi and paging systems that you talked about. Um, and I think what you're saying is, is CareWeb is, is a system that lives across all of these different channels um, and allows the data and allows communications to flow across each and any of those channels. But irrespective of which channel, the data is, is subsequently recorded to the central, um, central repository here. That's is, exactly is that the right way to think that's about exactly it? That's exactly right. 
Great, and I think you've um, you've prepared a demo to take us through it. Uh, yeah, so to, right? to, to speak very briefly to the way this works, um, and you know, a lot of what happens with CareWeb is on the back end, but we're, we're, what we're very excited about is the front end, of course, and the way that the experience is felt by the user. So we have a fairly clean UI, uh, not a lot of extra features where up on the top left, you can see who you are and how you appear to other providers should they search for you. And then when, for example, um, you are, you know, when you want to send a message, you just click over to the, to the main panel and you, you can put in the provider that you're searching for. You can also select a patient that you want to page about. So, for example, this Mr. Phantom Patient 8. And in, 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 as soon as you put in that information, you automatically see who is all on the treatment team for that patient. And then you can add them to the page very, very easily. And where is that um, patient care team information coming from? Right. So that's all coming from Epic. And it's, it's coming out through an interface engine in a language called HL7 which is being parsed in our integration engine, which is based on Mule ESB. And then that information is being deposited into Salesforce such that you can easily see, uh, you know, our, sorry, I should have mentioned before, our application is built on the Salesforce platform. And so anybody that logs into this, you know, custom Visual Force page can quickly see who are the patients that they're responsible for. In this case, these are these five people here. Um, and once, you know, once I see that, I can immediately send a quick message about one of them. Got it. That, um, so it looks like the, this Visual Force page is really the single um, kind of platform of engagement for, for many of the care team. You know, they come here and this, this front end wraps a bunch of different systems on the back end and, and is pulling information from those systems in real time, hence the, the, the care team information that, that you showed us just now. That's exactly right. And I should mention the same way that it allows for inbound information in that way, it also allows for outbound information as well. So if, for example, I want to send a page to Tejasvi, who is my intern, um, I can immediately search for her name. I can select her. And when I send her this message, the fact that there is a pager number for her, but there's no phone number for her, means that it will get routed appropriately to her pager, but not to some Wi-Fi phone that she's not carrying. And I can also verify that she's the correct intern. Usually on um, the medical team, there will be one or two or three different providers, and they all have their own like list of patients. So I can immediately check against myself that I'm, I'm sending it to the right person. Great. And, and so I, I, I get ready, I compose the message, and then I can just hit send. And so to give you a sense of how this would look clinically and how this is useful, well, let's say that I get this page, uh, that I get this message from David Kastner. He's one of our case managers. And he wants to know, can he get some SNF orders? Now, SNF means um, skilled nursing facility. So we think this patient is going to be able to be discharged from the hospital. And David sees that, you know, he's ready to do that. And, you know, once he gets ready, he sends me this message. And just as I'm about to respond, you can see that, I also get a message from Deja, who is my intern, that says, you know, FYI patient just spiked, which means they just had a fever. That fever means that I went ahead and got blood cultures, I started some antibiotics, and I think that we should cancel the discharge we were planning on today. And the great thing is that, that this is all living on Mr. Patient 8's wall. So if you go over to Mr. Patient 8, um, as David could easily do, he can see that that information has transpired and that he no longer needs to worry about getting the sniff orders from me because there's just no need. Now we're not going to be sending this patient home anymore. And in addition, you can also scroll through and see other information that's transpired about this patient. So, um, you know, it's, it looks like my intern actually texted my resident immediately prior to this to ask, oh, you know, this patient just spiked, what do I do? And so he somewhat cheekily responded, well, what do we always do? We get cultures and we get antibiotics. So by the time this information got transferred to me, it looked like she knew exactly what she was doing. Um, as appropriately, she had passed it through her, her resident first. And so this is a very real clinical scenario. It comes up all the time that these different streams of information need to be united in one place. And as a result of doing that, 
we're able to t do a better job taking care of this patient. So were I to send a message in response, I could easily say to Deja, you know, this sounds, you know, great point and good management. Um, we'll hold on discharge. And I can immediately add David to the message as well. So just in case he didn't see the previous information, he can he can figure that out for himself when he goes and looks at the when he goes and looks at the wall. And that is that. So that's what the I'm seeing is that that context of, of that thread, you know, would not have been that with the previous pages system. That's exactly right. I would have had to separately page David that we're going to cancel the discharge. I would have had to separately talk to um, to Dr. Kampala, my intern. I wouldn't have known all of the machinations that went on behind the scenes, some of which are important, some of which are not, but maybe I disagree with the specific choice of antibiotics. If that wasn't in her page to me, I could have figured out what they were trying to do and intervened at that point. So it really oh, is, it, it really goes from being a one-to-one -to, -one to like a one-to-many or even a many-to-many -many sort of communication platform. And I think that is the key point. And the pages inherently are one-to-one -one communication channels, but as, as you've shown here, the, um, the, the care team process is an inherently collaborative involving many parties, and, and hence the need to have a one-to-many communication platform. That's exactly right. So um, I'm, that's, that's it for the demo, so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to my colleague Ed Martin, who's going to talk a little bit about the behind the scenes. Okay. Before we dive into that, I, I know that CareWeb's been, been um, rolled out to a number of, of hospital wards over the last few months. Can you give us a sense of, of what that rollout's been like? Uh, yes. I believe that that is coming up now. There we go. Yes, I believe Ed will talk a little bit about this. Yeah, so um, we've rolled out CareWeb now to uh, two different medicine, uh, the, the different Department of Medicine wards at two different hospitals at UCSF, and um, the big roll-up came in June of this summer. Um, so now we're up to about 250 active users, uh, it's sending about 450 messages per day. Um, just in the last three and a half months, there have been over 30,000 messages that have been sent out on, on CareWeb in the last, uh, the last few months. Um, and looking at those numbers, about 60% of them are around uh, specific patients. And so that's kind of what we were expecting, and, and that uh, actually goes to prove the model that uh, we came up with for collaborative uh, uh, patient care messaging. Um, and so some of the benefits that, you know, when we talked to the folks that have been using this, is really around the unification and the transparency of the communications. People can see what's on the wall. Um, just in, in the uh, example that uh, Roman had given earlier, of just being able to see what was there, not having to duplicate information, not having to re-ask the same questions that can be answered just by looking at the patient's wall. And that really leads to a lot of increased efficiency in being able to, to um, actually just see the messages that are there and to be able to reach uh, the needed providers. Providers. And one of the things that has come up is, you know, um, taking care of patients at a hospital really is a team sport, and the, the team switches as we go through different shifts, and that's one of the things that, as part of our integration with EPIC, um, EPIC is the source system for who is caring for that patient at any given time. And what we've done by integrating a lot of these admit discharge transfer messages is that includes uh, the, those messages from EPIC include which physicians and which nurses are caring for that patient, and they're transmitted over to Salesforce, over the MuleSoft AnyPoint platform in real time, so that as the shifts change, we actually get that information, and there's no need to look up, oh, who's the attending, oh, who's the head nurse that's responsible for this patient? It's all there without having to do many lookups. So just to give like a couple of very concrete examples, I mean, if you wanted to find a way to reach the nurse that was caring for a patient and send them a message, there's a lot of steps involved in that before a care web, you would have to either physically go to that ward and write down the name, or you'd have to call the ward and get it from the unit secretary if he or she was there and was not on break, and then you would have to call that number. 
Um, and if you had wanted to send a message to the nurse on that number, that was a whole separate application. But instead, with the way CareWeb is set up, you know, the, the phone numbers are associated with the nurse. So as soon as the nurse sends a page to the, to the intern, uh, the intern is able to immediately say, oh, this came from such and such nurse. And if I want to just hit reply on my iPhone, you know, iPhone mobile client, I can quickly do that and just message her back and say, you know, that's fine. You can go ahead and give this medication or, oh, you know, please wait. I'll talk to you again after I get out of my conference. And so one, one uh, of my interns in particular was extremely excited about this and said, you know, this has really like transformed my ability to respond to messages and be in the loop because the nurse feels fine sending me something, knowing that she isn't disrupting me. And I feel very comfortable being able to respond to her and say, you know, this is something that can wait or this is something, thank you for letting me know, I'll come up right away. Great. Um, so we've heard about CareWeb Messenger from the physician's um, perspective um, in terms of the front end and the impact on the clinical workflow. Ed, uh, would now love to um, hear a little bit about the, the kind of the building and development of CareWeb from your perspective as the lead architect behind the solution. Sure. So the way that uh, CareWeb Messenger, the, the architecture and how it's put together, you know, we talked about integrating Epic and using the Mule AnyPoint platform, connecting it to the Salesforce applications and being able to uh, send it out to either the pagers or to um, the ASCON phones. And so how it starts out is actually starting from the right. We get HL7 uh, ADT messages. And again, HL7 is sort of the data standard um, for getting um, healthcare data out of an electronic medical record system. ADTs are admit discharge transfer uh, messages, which uh, really speaks to who is in the hospital, which patients are in the hospital, where, um, uh, where they are in the hospital, a, a little bit of demographic information, and um, more importantly, who's caring for them. And we get this message in real time um, through to Mule, and then we pass that on uh, you know, from the AnyPoint platform into, the, uh, into Salesforce. And one of the nice things about the AnyPoint platform is it understands both the schema of an HL7 message and, an e, um, and the Salesforce schema. And so we were able to quickly parse the information from the HL7 message and post it into the specific fields that we needed for Salesforce. And this is something that we were able to do uh, pretty quickly. And we didn't have to be experts in HL7, which is a very convoluted uh, standard for those that have worked on it. And so once that, all that information is in Salesforce, then um, from the, the Care Web Messenger application that you saw, we were able to pull all that information from the web application running on force.com. We send out the messages, they get stored in Salesforce, and then again, we use the AnyPoint platform to then take those messages from Salesforce and figure out, well, how uh, this message is being sent to uh, Dr. Kana, or it's being sent to a nurse. What is their preferred device? Is it a pager? Is it an ASCOM phone? And, and we figure that out on the AnyPoint platform. We've got logic running there, and then it'll send it out to the appropriate paging gateway where it'll go to a pager or to the ASCOM phone. Now, we also have an iOS application that's available that has pretty much the same functionality that the web application has. And again, um, it goes through the same message flow. So if you send out a message, it's hitting Salesforce via Salesforce APIs. The messages get sent out. But if there's a message that is, is destined to somebody with an iPhone running the CareWeb Messenger mobile application, it actually detects that situation. And we route, um, the AnyPoint platform will route the message through via Apple push notification services and say, hey, you've got a message about about one of your patients and it shows up as an alert on your iPhone. You open up that, uh, you, you click on the uh, a notification message and it opens up CareWeb and you can actually see um, the specific messages that were sent about your patient. And so what this does is allows for a HIPAA compliant way uh, of knowing that there's notifications about your patients but there's actually no protected health information that goes uh, that goes over the push notification services. And so all of this is because we store the protected health information on Salesforce, none of it is, is actually stored on the iPhone. That That's our way of, of maintaining the HIPAA compliance. Um, but, um, just um, touching on, on that point, um, Dr. Kana mentioned earlier that you know, there's a number of, of applications um, being integrated here. 
How did you think about really tying them together and turning them from just a bunch of applications to um, a truly compelling solution that, that work together? So that's a great question, David. I think that it, it really stemmed from the workflow. So it was a good example of that. Um, and as I was alluding to earlier, everybody that's working in the hospital is used to getting up, sitting down, getting up, sitting down. There's constant churn because when you go to see a patient, you're talking to the patient, you're doing something, you're hanging an IV, maybe you're doing CPR. I mean, there's a lot that could be going on in that patient room. And then when you leave, you chart about it. Uh, and you do that at a med center computer, and that computer is usually somewhere close to the most recent room you visited. And so as a result, you're not guaranteed or even likely to be at the same computer every day or even every hour. Um, it can change quite a bit. And so as a result of that, you need a fast way of logging in. So we let this sort of requirements dictate which systems we integrate with. And so as an example of that, it was very important that we integrate with a single sign-on solution at the medical center level. And the medical center uses this Caradigm Centillion system that does screen scraping because in order to speed up the way that you browse or that you log in to your computer and start doing your work, uh, they log you into a generic um, des desktops session. And so Logging you into a generic desktop session means that you need an alternative solution when you want to log the person into any individual application. And so we made sure we integrated with that. And then we made sure that we integrated with the single sign-on solution. And the fact that we needed to reach people wherever they were, if they were wandering the halls or, you know, not having to constantly sit in front of a computer and hit refresh, dictated the necessity to integrate with the paging solution. And so that all of that requirement gathering happened both formally and informally over the course of several months and even I would say years as we were you know as we were practicing in our various domains thinking about what was necessary. Great, thank you. And one final piece that um, we've started to include now and something that we piloted with CareWeb is now the actual ability to message patients. Um, we did a pilot with um, the cardiology ICU. Um, after a patient's discharge or even before this discharge, you may want to send a message to the patient or their families. Um, and you want to do so in, in a very secure way. And so we actually worked with a startup that had encryption technology to be able to send messages out via uh, Gmail or Facebook. And so that the physicians could actually send a message out to a family saying, hey, you know, your, your father's being discharged in, in two days. Um, or to the patient, you know, they get a lot of information upon discharge, and we might want to send them links on information for them to, to follow up on. And so we've added that ability, and we piloted that, that out, and that has worked pretty well, and it's something that we're going to be considering rolling out into um, future versions of the product made available to everyone. And so um, going over sort of all the work that we've done um, over the life of CareWeb Messenger, uh, we started out in October 2013, actually even, even earlier than that with an alpha, but just starting from the beta product, um, some of the things that we worked on are, you know, we, we knew that we needed to get the Epic ADT integration just to get the patient done demographic information, their location, and, and the care team. And we knew that we wanted to incorporate into the workflows and the ways that nurses, physicians worked with. Um, and we knew that, that uh, mobile, having an iOS client, was going to be important. And so we, we, we did all these in a beta, and um, we really had sort of a, a bare-bones team to begin with and really uh, scraped together a budget to get this idea off the ground to prove that it could work and be successful. And we, we actually did a very uh, very limited pilot to prove that it could be successful. And so much that, uh, we, you know, to the point that we were successful, we were able to get funding to do the, the 1.0 version of this. And uh, we, we launched that in March of 2014, where we basically upgraded the new user interface uh, we had the 1.0 version of, um, of, uh, of, of the uh, uh, iPhone client, and then um, we included some of the beta for the uh, cardiology uh, ICU um, for the patient messaging. And so we, get, we got some budget together there. We had a team of about uh, four developers working on it, and we worked on it for probably a good uh, four months. 
And then um, the success of that actually led to the, the 2.0 version. And the 2.0 version was a much wider rollout. And this is the one where we've got about up to 250 users on this. Um, and we knew that, um, you know, based on the success that we've had with, with the previous two versions, one of the things that we needed to do was to be able to make this uh, much more scalable. Um, we were limited to just the inpatient uh, population, and what we want to do is make this available for uh, outpatients as well. And so we knew that we had to be able to scale the ADT messages. And this is one of the nice things about the uh, AnyPoint platform that we found was that we were easily able to go from sort of a synchronous uh, single-threaded model of, uh, of, of uh, handling the ADT messages, and uh, we were able to increase that speed tenfold pretty easily. Uh, we included load balancing in there as well to support high availability for um, the messaging, uh, the ADT message processing, as well as the message routing. Uh, and one of the things that we added, uh, which I think is, again, helps uh, to ease the onboarding for this is auto-provisioning of users synchronized with our EPIC electronic medical record system. And so basically what that means is if somebody is added on as a user to EPIC, they're automatically added on as a user to CareWeb. Um, and we've, we've you know, shown some of the success that we've, we've had with this and in, in some of the numbers. Um, we are working on a 3.0 version. Uh, we want to be able to get some of the message information back into EPIC, and that's one of the things that we are uh, going to be working on. Um, again, I mentioned the inclusion of outpatient information and uh, the users uh, to be able to use that information uh, in other departments. Um, we want to include alerting from uh, our radiology system. And uh, last but not least, we also would like to include an Android client because there are uh, a lot of folks that are starting to take up Android as their preferred mobile device. Um, what is going to lead to uh, through all of this with version 3.0 is a uh, much wider hospital uh, rollout uh, to, to many more people. And uh, we're confident that the um, improvements that we've made uh, in the, in the uh, prior version that we released in 2.0 is going to allow us to, to scale uh, to meet that demand. Great. That's very exciting indeed. Um, well, thank you, gentlemen. I think that brings us to the close of the formal um, part of the, the presentation, um, although we do have some, some time for some questions and answers. So as I, I kind of ask our audience to, to prepare those now, let me just go over the webinar logistics once again. A recording and slides from the webinar will be made available shortly after this broadcast. And please do send your questions to us using the questions button at the top of your screen. And if we aren't able to get around to those, um, of course, please reach out to us through our website at www.mulesoft.com forward slash ask. Okay, so let's, with that, turn to questions and answers from our audience. Um, I'm, I'm getting a lot of questions um, that are kind of variations on a theme. So let me try and synthesize them and, and um, ask this of you, Ed, which is um, you, during your architecture slides, you showed a lot of the, the new and sexy technologies that I think everyone is, is starting to experiment with in terms of mobile um, and social media and cloud. Um, and I think what, what we saw through your discussion was really the importance of integration in allowing you to um, implement those technologies successfully and um, integrate them together with your um, existing legacy investments. Can you um, speak to a little bit about that, that journey? Yeah. Um, so I've been working in uh, R&D for, for quite a while, and so one of the things that um, that happens with innovation is that, you know, I, I got this from a former CTO that, that I worked with, is innovation happens on the edges. And what, what that means is that there's a lot of established systems that you, you end up having to work with, and the innovations sometimes have to be built on top of that. And with such things as cloud services like Salesforce, um, or with mobile applications, those are the new innovations, but the things that they need to talk to are well-established systems like the electronic medical record system or in the case of, uh, of a directory system, Active Directory, or some very legacy type of uh, single sign-on systems. And so you need to actually have a platform that can not only talk to legacy systems, but you can also talk to the new technologies. And so having something like uh, AnyPoint that can do both uh, and, and handle a variety of modes of, of uh, integrating uh, not just data, but also real-time communications. I mean, that's sort of key to being able to innovate. Great. 
Um, the next question that, that we have here is with regards to how you kind of drove adoption of CareWeb um, amongst your, your colleagues. Um, whether rightly or wrongly, healthcare often has a um, reputation of being averse to change, particularly technological change. Um, how were you able to get your colleagues excited about this new solution and, and to start using it over and above the pages that they had already? So, I mean, I would say that there are two key things to remember. I mean, the first is you have to you have to come at it from from a position of humility. Um, you have to ask yourself, what is what I'm doing with respect to the provider? How is it affecting their workflow? Is it making it better? And if it is, how can I communicate that effectively? And how can I make sure I understand if there are aspects that might actually be worsened? And no matter what solution you implement, there will be change. And that change is not always going to be positive, even if it seems like it would be. A great example of that is when we first started this process, um, to preserve the ability to log in quickly, uh, we had to make some trade-offs with having single sign-on. Um, but once we added the single sign-on component, we then made the system slow down just a little bit. So with that, you know, users will look at that and say, oh, you're, you're asking me to wait longer for my application to load. So why should I do that? So I think that linked to that question is the second question, which is, if I'm adding a system that I want my users to use in healthcare, I need to be thinking actively about what system am I taking away. Um, I shouldn't be creating one more silo, one more thing. Providers are sick to death of one more thing. So if you're going to add one more thing, you should find a way to get rid of one less thing. And that one less thing in this case was pretty clear, and that's one of the reasons it was so compelling to integrate with the paging system is, okay, well, I'm, I'm giving you this new application that you can use to communicate, and in response I'm saying you can stop using the old system that allowed you to send pages, for example. So I would sort of put those as the two most important lessons learned of this, of this whole process for our team. Great. Well, thank you so much, gentlemen, for your time today. Um, unfortunately, that's um, all we can fit in in terms of questions. Um, but for those that, that weren't able to have your questions answered, please do continue the dialogue with us through our website um, or Twitter. So with that, I think um, just remains for me to, to thank Ed Martin and Dr. Raman Khanna once again for your time and for your insights. I think it's a really compelling example of how healthcare organizations are levering technology to really improve outcomes as well as increase operational efficiency. Um, and it's, it's certainly very humbling for us at Millsoft to be part of that story in helping to bring these different data feeds together in real time and serve them up through mobile, through web, as well as through the existing pager system. Um, I look forward to um, continuing the discussion with our uh, listeners. Um, and thank you all once again. Thank you. Thank you.